Jess, put the body in there. Put it in there. Go on, put it in there. You miss. Put the body in there. Good girl. Are you gonna get it? Put it in here then. Put it in here. You can't reach, can you? Put it in there. Hello guys, me again. And uh, here we are now, finally, with this video that I know a lot of you have been waiting to see. How are we going to put this MT82 back together? I've got the manual here. I've um, got a free download online. There's loads of them if you look around. And basically, I printed it out. Um, it's not a very good manual. There's bits missing and stuff not in there at all. Um, sequence is a bit sort of funny. And some of their ideas about doing stuff I don't agree with either. So um, there's also a couple of bits like there's plates holding the bearings in. My gearbox doesn't have plates in it. So, you know, there's a few little bits and pieces that are different and, and odd. So um, there we go. I'm going to start this video by saying kind of a disclaimer. Um, this is basically a video of how I'm putting my MT82 back together. I am in no way telling you what to do. I'm just showing you how I've done it. If you want to follow along with me and do it the same, then you'll get the same results. So, you know, I am filming this live. It, 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 this is before, I'm not filming this segment after it's built. It's here, it's in pieces. Um, so if I break something, then you'll see me break it and you'll know basically not to do it that way. So um, I'll include everything. I'll include everything I make you know, mistakes on and I will try and guide you around those mistakes that I make so that you don't have to. But as I say, this isn't, you know, I'm no professional on building gearboxes. I've built quite a few. But I'm no, I'm no professional on the MT82. This is the first one I've ever built. Um, it's the first one I've ever stripped. It's the first MT82 I've ever worked on, actually. So, um, you know, what I'm doing is going by the manual, going by common sense, a bit of experience with the gearboxes, and a bit of an engineering background. So, um, as I'm speaking to you now, the gearbox is in pieces. Um, so, let's go. In fact, I can prove to you the gearbox is in pieces. Let's come down here, and we can see. Here is the casings down here so we can see it's all still in pieces nothing's together so there we go so um come along for the ride hope you enjoy it see you in a minute okay so as i just said to you i'm sort of doing this at the end um this video is going to be in two parts this is part one it's going to take us up to step 24 in the instructions it's up to the point where we're going to fit the bearing for the first gear so um, I need to get a new snap ring, so that's why I'm calling it a day halfway through, and then I'll do part two, which will be the rest of the build from then onwards. So the tools to get you up to this step, um, step 24 in the manual, are you obviously need a heat gun, okay, for you need to heat stuff up so it goes together lovely, heat up the casings and stuff. You can use a blow lamp, but the trouble with the blow lamp, it makes everything sweat. So heat gun is better, which is something I've only just learned. Um, obviously a soft mallet, 21 millimeter socket or ring spanner, 13 millimeter socket, T40 uh, Torx drive. I've got these, um, this is a 12 mil drive in there and a half inch drive um, for the Allen key, or you could use an ordinary 12 mil Allen key, but you do use that quite a lot and you need to be able to torque some of the bolts up as well. So if you haven't got one of these, get yourself one. Um, snap ring pliers, these are great for having, they're not O-ring pli pliers, they're, they're uh, not uh, circuit pliers, I mean, they're snap ring pliers. They've got a square end on them, as you can see, and they've got serration. They're ever so cheap. Uh, you don't need to buy the best ones. And these are these are great. Um, should have bought them years ago. Um, and then I've got these tools I made, as I mentioned. As I say, I'm filming this at the end of the video. I've used these, and to be honest, they're pretty much a waste of time. If you don't have a lathe or, or you can make them, don't worry about it. Just get some heat into the bearings somehow. I do mention later in the video, you could actually use the heat gun to heat the bearings and you're probably saying, oh my God, you're gonna ruin the seals. Well, the seals, if you soften the seal slightly, I don't think it's gonna matter because they're all internal inside the gearbox. I think they're basically there to stop um, debris and stuff getting into the bearings from within the gearbox. So normally gearboxes wouldn't have seal bearings inside them anyway. So uh, it's nice that it does have but um, yeah, if anything does get in there, it will stay trapped in there. But if it can't get in there in the first place, then then great. Um, so yeah, I, if you don't have those, don't worry about them. This is M12 bolt here, just so I could pick them up when they were hot. Okay, so a bit of a waste of time making those. I've got some basic, you do need a press, I think, really, to, to strip and build one of these gearboxes. And I've got some basic tubular bits of scrap steel and aluminium and all sorts of bits and pieces to 
to help press it together get yourself a nice collection of those obviously a nice torque wrench this is a, this one only goes from 8 to 60 newton meters and it's a 3 8 drive my half inch drive goes from 60 newton meters up so i need to use one of these old boys um basically for for torquing up the um the fork pivots as you'll see in the video um as far as consumables goes you want some grease any old grease will do um, it's only really to hold the bearings on the end of the main selector shaft. Some Loctite 243, thread lock and seal, or there's this one here, which is a more commonly available version, which is much cheaper. Hilo seal, basically this is a, a silicon sealant. You could use um, the Worth stuff or anything. I'm just basically using these on the back of the bolts, heads of the bolts to seal them, as you'll see in the build. And here I've got a small clean bottle of oil, and this is a GL4 oil, so I can just oil bearings and stuff as we go. Um, it's the same oil that's actually going to be used in the gearbox once it's done. Oh, and obviously for handling your hot parts, a pair of gloves. And there we go. Um, that's all the tools I've used up to here. So uh, let's start putting it back together. Just another thing guys, habit worth getting into, um, when you do strip these gearboxes, or you strip anything really, anything that's strapped, anything that you've thrown away or destroyed in the strip then, put it in a bag, and then you've got that bag of parts then to order your spares from. So here we've got the selector seal, we've got the output shaft seal, front input shaft seal, we've got our detents here that you have to destroy because it's a crap design. And then we've got the front counter shaft seal there. So when you've got all that stuff laid out in front of you, you can make a note and make sure you order the parts. Now, if you see, I've got snap rings in here now. I was going to reuse the snap rings. And as you'll see at the end of the video, it was a foolish decision. So um, I've now got to go and order these. So they're in now by spares parts. So um, and unfortunately, with this gearbox, like with the front seal here, it has to be destroyed because there's no other way of getting it out. This seal here has to be destroyed. There's no other way of getting it out. These have to be destroyed, no other way of getting them out. Really annoying, because um, they cost like a hundred pounds. Um, and then the rear seal there, you don't have to destroy it to get it out. But as soon as you're changing everything else, you may as well change this one. You can see how new this one was. It's still got the um, the dabs of grease in it as you get when they're new, you know, with the uh, evenly spaced. <laughs> so that one could go again, I expect. So um, anyway, got all of that stuff, just haven't got these seal clips. They're not circlips, they're snap rings. I keep calling them bloody circlips. They're snap rings. Right, so here we go at the bench. Now, what I've got here is the manual printed out. I've got a bolt here just holding it down because the wind's blowing around a bit. And basically, as I said, I just now I've printed it out. Um, and what I should have done is just filmed at the end all the tools you need, and I've put that in now. So we're back to real time now. So um, basically, we've got this, this manual, which I'm not very happy with. And I've picked it up at step seven in the assembly sequence, um, basically because everything before this is all about reassembling the um, the main shaft and everything. I haven't taken any of the main shaft apart other than just to get it all apart. Now, the first thing you notice with this manual, it doesn't cover, if you remember, we took this apart to get to the breather part, which is also the selector linkage and everything. Um, it doesn't cover that at all. There's a plastic bung with an O-ring that goes in the bottom of the gearbox. It doesn't cover that at all. So th there's bits there missing. And also, again, if you remember, if you saw in the strip down, um, you have those two selector shafts that disappear and then all of a sudden reappear. Um, the same happens on the reassembly. So, um, yeah, and, and also they talk about here, we're, we're putting everything back together. Um, let's talk about here putting the main shaft the lay shaft and the input shaft together and then dropping it down in the gearbox. Now the trouble is, the back of that input shaft has a synchro on it and if that comes away from there, um, all your synchro rings gonna, and springs are going to fall off into the bottom of the gearbox. So what I'm going to do is actually put it that way up and see if I can drop the case in over the top and we'll see what happens. So um, straight away that's one of the little changes I think we can make. So we'll see how that works. But um, basically what it's telling us to do first of all is heat up the casing. This is the rear case here, um, this one, this one here, it's the uh, rear case. So this is where your, your main output shaft comes out and then your, your intermediate casing between this and the transfer box bolts on here. So as you can see it's all been cleaned and wire brushed off and everything. Um, it's a very weird alloy. I've, I've, I use a chemical, a spray on chemical, like an acid. I got from Frost and it works really really well on Japanese casings but on this one it hasn't really done a very good job so um, I sort of struggled with it a little bit but 
at least it's clean. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, I guess. So um, what we're going to do first of all is telling us here to use a hot air gun and heat it up. So I've got my hot air gun here. And we're going to basically heat up the casing, get it nice and hot, and then drop the bearing in. Now, when we move forward, we can see that basically when we put these bearings in, so imagine this is the bearing now in the casing. We've now got to drop a shaft into there. And what they suggest is actually heating this up. And the way of doing that is using the special tools. There's three of them. Um, I think they're numbers 704, 703, and 702. Um, I can't remember now. It's in here. Um, yeah, 308, 703, 4, and 2, I think it is. And um, basically, I've made them. So we've got some lumps of wild steel here. You can see them. Basically, one of them is 39.8 on this diameter to fit into a 40 mil bore, like so. Don't make it 40 mil because obviously when you heat this up, it's going to expand. So you want it to go in, you don't want it to seize up in there. So I've made it 39.8, so it's a nice, nice easy fit. Um, and that is 23 millimeters long. Then we've got one here, which is 34.8 to fit into a 35 mil bore. Again, 23 millimeters long. And what I've done here, I've machined the back down to 44 millimeters diameter as a step on there, so that it doesn't actually touch the seal. So there we go. So we're going to heat those up in the oven. And then we've got the same here, 34.8 by 17 mil long. And again, we've got that 44 mil on the back, and that's going to go on like, like so. So you can see it doesn't touch the seal. So basically I've made those out of steel, so they absorb the heat and then dissipate it slowly. If I made them out of aluminium, as soon as you take them out of the oven, they'd be cooling off. So um, there we go. So again, 39.8, 34.8, and 34.8. So if you want to make those tools beforehand, you can, and, and they're just mild steel. And in the back, I've put an M12 thread, so that when they're hot, they come out of the oven, I can basically just screw that bolt into them like that. And then I can place them in and undo the bolt and remove it. Okay, again, when I want to take them out, it might still be too hot to touch. I can just use the bolt. So there we go. Okay, so what I've done here, I've got those tools that I've made. I've put some masking tape on them, as you can see around there. And that's just jammed in the bore now, so it enables me to pick the bearing up to place it into the housing when it's all hot and everything. And it should just drop in when it's hot. Make sure you get them right around. Remember this step goes on the outside because this is where the screws are going to grip it. So we'll take our hot air gun and we just heat it up. Like so I'll have to put it on one I think for another setting. Okay, so I've got it nice and hot now. I used some water just so I could see when the water evaporated, I knew it was at least 100 degrees. So that bearing now will just drop in. It's square, and you can see it's just dropped in. So that's sat there now. We just leave that to cool down now. Don't do anything, just let it cool down. Let it sit there. And as you can see, that bearing is free in there. So what we're going to do now is do the same on the uh, other two bearings in the main case, and then I'll uh, come back. And there we go, they're in. That's the counter shaft and the main shaft bearings. I've left the steel bungs in there purely because if I pull them out, I might dislodge the bearings. But they're just, they just drop in. So if you, I don't think they're 100 degrees. I got it so I just couldn't touch it. And then they just, they just drop in. Um, and then as it all contracts again, it'll uh, hold it all in. It, it saves you having to press things and stuff. It's, um, 
it's a much better way of doing stuff. So uh, we'll be doing this a lot going through with the, um, you know, with the synchronizer hubs and everything. We're going to heat that, heat them up with the air gun and, and try and drop them on rather than start pressing against these bearings and stuff. It's a much better way of assembling. Okay, so now we've got to fit these four bolts. Um, as you can see in the manual here, it's showing you fitting that outer race for the counter shaft bearing. Uh, this one here, let's get it in the light. This one in here, I didn't actually replace that one. You can see it's got a little bit of flash rust on it from when I pressure washed it. That's inevitable if you degrease something and then, and then pressure wash it, it's going to get flash rust in a second. Nothing to worry about. Um, if anything, the, the, the microscopic pits can help with lubrication. If you, uh, if you look back into um, history with BMW and stuff with their engines, you'll see what I mean. Um, so basically, yeah, we've got to fit these bolts and we've got to tighten them to 10 newton meters. Now, it doesn't say on here to use thread lock. I'm going to use thread lock on pretty much everything in this gearbox. So this is Loctite 243 I'm using. I've also got this one, which is a cheaper version of it. But you can see it's B243, so it's obviously a 243 equivalent. So I'm just going to put a drop, a drop of thread lock on each of these bolts. I don't know if I'm in, yes, I am in shot. One of my hands in the way. So I've just put one little drop each of these bolts nothing too much you don't have to go too mad with this stuff okay so that's all I've put on there just one little drop just like that and then we'll drop these in here I've got my Torx T40 here all done Okay, so that's uh, those bolts are in now in both cases, so that's all 12 of those bolts in and torqued up. So, the next part in the manual now is telling me I need to put the reverse gear assembly into the um, into the casing so basically what it's saying down here is fit it in, in in a certain order so that's the counter shaft roller bearing and then the reverse gear idler um, which is here with its, its complete assembly there so basically what I need to do is fit that in um, in a certain order so it's saying fit the the reverse glider, then the reverse glider mounting, and then put the bolt in and tighten it to 27 newton meters. And the bolt here is on the side, and this comes through from the outside of the casing. So what I'm going to do is take that bolt out of there. And that bolt actually is going into the into the shaft. So we'll take this quadrant off of there. Now this gear, you can see it's got a step on it, and that step faces out towards you. It faces that that aluminium casing. So the the gear actually goes in that way round. So what I'm going to do is just drop that in there. Now I've got a little bottle of GL4 oil here. So I'm just going to put some oil on this shaft so it's not all going together dry. Drop that in there like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I need to get some better light, don't I? So that's gone in like that. Now I'm going to turn the shaft so that it's facing the bolt. We've got a slot in the top there, you can see, and that actually is in line with the um, with the hole. And the first thing I've done wrong is I should have put that bearing in first. So this bearing goes in first. So this is the counter shaft bearing. So we'll just give that a quick wipe off with our finger, get rid of the residue from the tape. Okay, and now that's gonna go in like so. Okay now the cage is different on one side to the other so what I'm going to do is put it in that way because that's the way it goes. I've got a photograph here um, and this photograph you can see here it's showing me that, which way that gear goes with the step on it and it's also showing me that this actually goes in that way because you can see that bearing down at the bottom there look at it that way round okay you can see it's like that that way round there's a black ring around the inside of the the bolt the uh, rollers so basically it goes that way round so that's going to drop in there like that 
and then we're going to put this gear in and that as you can see that's going to stop the um, that's going to stop that bearing coming out I'm going to improve my positioning and lighting for the next segment of this guys so I'm just going to put a drop of oil on there put some oil down in that bearing and then this quadrant can go on the top he says Maybe that's locked on there. Get that off. Turn it so that slot is in line. And then I'm going to drop this down over that shaft like so. Keeping it square so that it does drop down. And I'll take the bolt. Okay, now I've got the bolt lined up so it's going in finger tight. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some silicon around the head. You can see on the head of this bolt there's a like a raised ridge. Sorry guys, this light is awful. There's a raised ridge on here. Come on camera, focus. This is a raised ridge that pinches into the aluminium. I'm going to put some silicon around there just to make sure. And I'm going to put some thread lock on there and then torque it down 27 newton meters. Okay, so we've got thread lock on the thread, a bit of silicon around the, around the head of the bolt. And then we're just going to drop that bolt in there. And then we can just, 13 mil socket, just wind it in using the torque wrench. The torque wrench is set to 27 Newton meters. So we've got the casing down on its face. And then and that's that in there nice and solid now. And the gear has some end float and it's free to spin on the bearings like that. So there we go. Right then guys, so here we are now back with the main casing. And this is where the manual kind of goes wrong because if you look here, Here's the picture of us putting the eight bolts back in, holding those bearings in inside there. You can see there's four of them there and then there's four down, down here. Um, and as you can see there, we've got the aluminium cast in, the same as we've got the aluminium cast in there, with nothing in it whatsoever. And then when we go to the next page, all of a sudden, there we go, the mechanism's back. So there's no mention of the mechanism whatsoever in the manual. So um, we have to basically guess the torque, the torque of the bolt and everything. So what we've got, if you don't know what this is, go back and look at the strip down. This is the part that swings around in here, um, in there. And that basically um, is where your four bearings go on your main selector. It'll all become clear as we go through. So, And then we've got this steel bearing here, which goes between these two plungers. You can see these two bits down in here, they're actually plungers. Uh, I might be able to zoom in for you here. Let's bring the camera down a touch, there we go. And you can see those two plungers down in there. So this is basically going to sit down in there. So what I'm going to do is put a drop of oil on it. A drop of oil on here, a drop of oil on that bearing. And down in round the pivot, let that work its way in. Okay, and then that goes around that pivot, and then that's just going to sit down inside there, like so. Okay, and then we've got this piece here with the spring. Now this has got the fine thread in it, as you can see there. I'm zoomed in, so I've got to be careful. There's the fine thread inside there, as you can see. Okay, now. That's what this bolt goes in, and if you saw my last video, I made a video on um, putting a 8th uh, eighth, eighth BSP time thread in there, and that's going to screw into there, and that's what holds this in. So this is actually going to slot down into here, and just sit in there, sorry, it's going to sit in there, like that. 
okay and then the this will come round and go in there to actually put some spring tension on this pin here I'll make sure you can see what I'm pointing at okay I'm really sorry guys getting the light down in here is, is not impossible it's very difficult to film because it's it's down sort of 12 inches deep <laughs> um, so basically what I'll do is I'll just get this together and then I'll, what I'll do is I'll um, explain what I've done when it's together. I can get a better shot of it. Right then guys, so you can see how that goes now. Basically we've got the spring in there which is over those two pins. And I'll bring you a close up shot in a minute. We've got the bolt on the outside which I've done up. Um, just bring you around and show you that bolt. See the bolt on the top there? That's now done up. I'm not going to mention a torque figure I've used because I didn't use one. There's no mention of it in the manual. It's a very, very fine thread and it's going into aluminium. So I've just sort of snugged it down and then just given it a bit of a tweak just to hold it in place. It's not really doing a lot. Um, it's just basically holding that guide in and, and the, the tube for the spring. Nothing else is really touching it. So, you know, I've, I've, I've sort of given it a, a sort of tweak. You know, it's probably about 30 pounds feet. I don't know. But um, don't take a word for it. Just do it how you how you feel. Uh, so basically, there we go. That's that done. Um, getting that spring over. What I did was actually put the gearbox this way round, like this. So I was actually working down on it. Okay. And then let me come zoom out. I was working down on it, and then basically got this screwdriver, long screwdriver, and I just literally put the screwdriver between the two posts. Just forced the spring down and it just fell in on its own it's not actually very strong it's uh you know it's not too difficult to get in and there's nothing really there to snag you if it does slip or anything so not too bad but if you do cut yourself don't blame me right then guys welcome back here we are day two now so put your show around the garage there um so looking here at the manual what it's telling us to do is to uh, cable tie the main shaft and the counter shaft together and then we've got the input shaft on the front here, which when you turn that assembly up to put into the gearbox, will fall off. Now, I'll show you here, there are a couple of holes. Um, I don't know if you can make them out here. But there are a couple, there's a hole here, you can't see it because there's not enough light. But there's a hole there and it comes out the other side. You could put a piece of MIG wire through there and then um, just you know tie it up to this. The trouble is, there is a bearing on the end of this shaft that goes into the back of the input shaft and that basically catches on the MIG wire. So if you get it assembled and then you can't pull the MIG wire out, you then need to strip the gearbox again. And I'm not sure what that MIG wire is going to do to that bearing. So didn't want to chance that. So what I've done, I've cable tied it all together, as you can see, and I've put it this way up in the vise. So we've now got the, the main shaft is actually held in the vise in some aluminium jewels. And the actual um, counter shaft is supported on this jewel. And now I've got, I've got the gearbox case inverted. So rather than have it as they've shown here with those hot plates on the inside, I'm going to put them on the front side in the bellows in here. Um, and then that is, the idea of that is it's going to get heat into those bearings and basically expand them just by a couple of microns and make fitting them easier. And I've also got the nut here, or the bolt should I say, that goes onto the front of the counter shaft that basically screws in here, okay? So I can basically pull it down and make sure it's all good. In this side here, we've got a snap ring groove. And we can make sure that snap ring groove is flush on there. If we get any problems, we can just gently tap around with a mallet and get it all to come down. So I've got those, those jigs I made. I showed you uh, yesterday to me, about a few minutes ago to you. Um, I've got these in the oven now. I'm heating them up to about 120 degrees. Uh, let them get a good hope heat soak into them. And then I'm going to put them in here. And put that on now I don't know about filming this I don't know how I'm going to manage it because basically I need to get up on a stool and lift this casing up onto these shafts because if I come back Mr Mustang there if I come back you can see how high it all is um, it's I need to lift it up onto the top of there so um, and if you're wondering what that is that is a Toyota GT86 and I actually built the body kit on that that featured in the Banzai magazine I built the body kit on that so uh, still got the moulds if anyone wants them. Um, so basically, yeah, the the um, this 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 casing here has got to go down over those shafts there. Now, as I said at the start of this video, this is going to be my method of doing it. I think it's better than holding it all upside down and having it fall apart. 
because inside this this hub here where the cable tie is you've got three little balls and springs and everything in there luckily on this version it's one assembly so it falls out as one piece um, with a lot of gearboxes you've got a separate ball a little brass piece and then it'll be a spring uh, so on here it's nice that it's all one assembly um, and much easier to put back together so uh, there we go so that's all together there now that can sit there that's there I'm gonna go and get my hot parts out and if I do get a chance to get on the tripod and show you, try this, show you this going on, then I will. Okay, so here we can see we've got the, uh, there's the bell housing with the, the main case there. Got a blanket on to keep the heat in and there's the two bungs in there. And as I said, if you remember, I said I put a M12 thread in them. So basically I can just basically screw that bolt in a couple of turns, take it out. That makes life a lot easier. So we'll put the blanket back in there, let the heat do the work, and then we'll see if it goes on. Work now, those bearings are all expanded in there. So all I've got to do now is get up on my step. Like so, we got the case in. And we can go over the top. Make sure we can knock anything in. There we go, knock everything. And then we can just drop it down on, like so. And then I think it's going to need a gentle tap. And, that, and then we'll be there. And there we go, that's the two shafts back in the gearbox case. Right, I used those metal parts that I made. To be honest, I don't think they're worth using at all. I think they're a complete waste of time. Um, I ended up heating them to about 130, left them in the oven for about an hour to you know, really heat soak. Um, put them in the bearings. The trouble is, I think the heat is um, not convecting, conducting through the bearing into the aluminium and the aluminium is just soaking it up. So the bearing, it gets warm, but even after sort of leaving it in there for sort of three minutes, you can still touch the bearing. Um, so I left it in for like 10 minutes and you can still touch the bearing. So, you know, the, the bearing is pulling all the heat out of that lump of seal and then all the aluminium is pulling all the heat out of the, out of the actual um, the thing. So you could basically put it on the top, I guess, and use a hot air gun on it. I was worried about damaging the seals, but then the seals on the bearings don't really matter because they're all internal. I think they're just there to keep debris out of the bearings. But in the end, what I did, I managed to get them to bite. And then I went over to the press over here. You can see the press is set up a very long distance between the head and the bottom. Um, luckily on mine, we've got an adjustment on here so I could slide it over and basically just go, you know, pressure here, pressure here, pressure here, pressure here, pressure here, pressure here, and, and basically get it in. Not much force required at all. So, um, you know, if you don't have a lathe, if you don't have the, the resources to make those steel bones, I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, perhaps just you know put the, the shafts out in the cold or even in a freezer and then put the, the gearbox with the bearings in front of the fire or something that it will warm up and just press it together just to give you a couple of microns but um, really those I don't think those things are worth it so now we need to move over to the bench so I'm gonna put the camera up here so you can see what I'm doing what we're talking about and hopefully the camera will stay there right so if you're following the manual basically told us here that we need to put those steel parts in then it's telling us to remove the straps now it's telling us to install the third fourth and fifth sixth gear selectors um, into the gearbox now if you didn't see my video on strip down you'll see there's some issues with this that one minute they're there like here look they're, they're, they're little tiny stumps um, and then here they're full length shafts so it's 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 the manual's not good. Um, so install them and then tighten the bolts to 37 newton meters, 27 pounds feet. Well, these are the bolts that go in the sides. So basically you've got your forks in your gearbox like so, and then these bolts come through the side and that's what they pivot on. And you've got a little nylon or plastic bush in there. So that's what they are for. These are gonna be thread locked to seal the thread. And I'm also again gonna put some silicone. Again, these have got these, these ridges on the back to actually bite into the aluminium which is a great idea when you use them once, but if they've been in and out a couple of times, you're gonna end up with more than one circle, I think. So um, basically what you, you might get is a, is a leak path for the oil. So tiny little bit, this is Hilo Sill, made by Holomar. This is what comes with um, the Ashcroft uh, limited slip or, or automatic torque bias in center differential fitted. If you haven't seen that video, go back and have a look. I'll tell you all there how to put the transfer box back together. And then here we've got the shafts the relevant shafts here. This is, um, I'm not sure which is which. I think the bottom one is 5th, um, 6th, the top one is, no, the bottom one's 4th, 
third, fourth, and the top one, the, the one highest up as we are now, is uh, fifth, sixth. So um, let's go and get these in the gearbox, and then um, I'll come back. The other thing I want to talk about, that's right, was doing this. Now, this is a problem a lot of us face from time to time. It says here, 37 newton meters, 27 pounds feet. Now, all I have, as far as a 12 millimeter Allen key goes, is this, which is a half inch drive from a Sykes Picavant hex bit set, which is well worth having. Now, the trouble is, I don't have a half inch to 3 8 converter, and my half inch torque wrench starts, as you can see here, at 60 newton meters, so it's no good. And my 3 8 one starts at 8 and goes up to 60, which is perfect. But as I said, I don't have the 3 8 converter and I don't have a 3 8 12 mil Allen key. So I'm going to use this. This is a good old, good old um, torque gauge, um, torque wrench, shall I say. And basically with these, what happens is you twist the end and it pulls the lever around like this. If you haven't seen one before, I'm sure you have. If you're into Land Rovers and like me, you're old, and I'm sure you've seen these before. These things, to be honest, are actually quite good because you calibrate them yourself. You basically set that rod to zero, as you're looking at it there, and then use it. Um, you're going to get slight, very slight differences with temperature change and stuff, but you know that's going to be negligible. And the thing is, these bolts—they're not really doing anything other than sitting in the gearbox. So the 37 newton meters is just to make sure they don't come undone. Um, it's not like we're pulling down into a bearing or something. So. Just going to use this, do these up um, using this one, and that will be that. So, um, <clears throat> as you can see, I've moved the gearbox now down onto my table, which is down here, so I can get the camera in a better position so you can see what I'm doing. But unfortunately, with all this, we're right down inside the gearbox, so I'm probably not even going to bother filming it because basically it'll just be like watching me go in. I'll, I'll, I'll run the camera and see what happens. If it's rubbish, I'll just edit it out. So, um, see you in a second. Okay, so we're kind of upside down here. Um, very precariously positioned. I've got a tripod on two legs. So um, looking down in here, here's the fork. This is the third, fourth fork. And I've got the bolts screwed on the side. You can just see, I find myself something to point with. Let's use this old screwdriver. You can just see down in here, just where the end of the screwdriver is, you can see that the pivot's in there. If I pull the bolt out, you'll see it come out, I think. Okay, so that's the pivot for the for the selector fork. So it's telling you to put the selector in there and, and put the fork in. The trouble is then is when you come to put the selector shaft in, which goes into that hole in there, you can't get it in. It won't go lock in. So you need to sort of do all this simultaneously. And believe me, putting that fork in there is an absolute joke. Now I'm going to try and do this on camera so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm putting the bolts in first of all with no sealant or anything on them. Because then what I'll do is take one at a time and put the thread lock on them then. So if I just wind this one out. So that's out of the way. And then wind this one back. I've got to put my hand in here to hold it, I'm afraid. Which basically stops you seeing anything. But hopefully you'll be able to get from this just how awkward this is. Now getting that in there, you've got to kind of tip it up vertical and sort of roll it in. Um, it's not easy at all so um, you have been warned so I want to put some oil down in this bottom bearing so I'm just going to run some oil down in there and some on that one as well while we're here and then hopefully I can hook this selector fork in there oh that was easy now the selector fork is pulling it down Select a rod, sorry. So we go wind that in there, that hold that in place. Just check it's all gonna work okay. So you can see there that's all gonna work okay and it's not gonna fall apart. So that's that one. Now the next one is this one here, which I believe is a lot easier. This is the um, fifth, sixth, third, fourth. Yeah, this is the fifth, sixth selector. Again, with that nubbing over to that side. Again, I'm going to put these feet the 
so I can get to them. You can see how awkward it is getting it to slide in. Yeah, as one goes in, the other side pops out. Oh dear. There we go. So they're both in. So I'm going to take this selector, make sure I've got it the right way up. Put the finger in. The finger on there is going to go into that hole. And then slide that down in. Oops. Drop the bolt on the floor, which means it'll have to be cleaned again. We'll just put one bolt in here. Just to hold that in place. There we go, that's not going anywhere now. So what I do now is I'm going to put some thread lock on those bolts, put some sealer under the heads, and then torque them down. See you in a minute. And there we go, guys. There's the forks in with the pivots and everything. I've dropped some oil down in there. So everything's all nice now. So they're all done, all sealed up, all torqued up. Job done, and there's the two selector shafts there. Going back to the manual now. Um, oh dear. They've done it again. So they're telling us now to put this main selector shaft in. Um, install the main selector, uh, secure the bearings with grease, install the main selector. So that's great. So you put the, the main selector in there and then you add these two bearings onto the, um, onto the shafts and then you pop this plate over the top. And just as they did when you're stripping it down, how on earth are you supposed to put that plate over the top when this main selector as you can see here, this leg appears here, and then when you come to this side, it's gone. <laughs> so basically, that leg there engages in here. So that leg is going to come over and engage in here. So basically, with that there, you can't slide the plate over because the plate has got two holes in it here that go over those two selector shafts. So you obviously can't slide the plate over. So you need to fit the plate first. So um, what we'll do is we'll put the we'll just skip this step here and then we'll jump straight to here and then we'll come back to that after we put the plate in so what we're going to do now is these bearings you can see the bearings are in the plate and they're like in a plastic bush and you can see they're split so they come apart here and i've got these in the correct way this plate is upside down so i know that bearing is going to come out of there and flip over onto the shaft so i'm going to do that now and we'll do it on camera for you okay so we've got the the smaller of the two races here is going to go on this one, I believe. So you can see here that basically this just unclips and separates like so. And I'm able to slide this gear, this bearing down and over this gear. He says, hoping it doesn't break, because if it breaks, I've got to wait for parts to come again. There we go, and then we'll clip that back together. I'm not quite sure how we get back together, but it will clip back together. There we go, just push it and it clips back in. So that's that one in. And then this one here is coming out, as I said, I took it out this way. So I'll flip it over and clip it. And then just clip it back together. Job done. So they're in there now. Now we can get some oil into them. Okay, so that'll sit like that. Give my hands a quick wipe. Give these faces a quick clean. And then this plate is going to sit. in there like so and it's going to slide over so we'll put some we'll put some oil in after I'm going to get some oil into those into those bushes so this plate's going to literally slide over like so over those shafts and that's going to go in there like that and then we've got three bolts to put in there and torque up and there we go there's the three bolts they're the only three black bolts in the gearbox so basically um, you can't really go wrong there so just pull these down evenly I'll 
got my torque wrench set to 24 newton meters, which is the 18 pounds feet, which is the correct torque according to the manual. But then the manual's probably wrong, so. Just go around and check them again. And they've all got thread lock on them as well. Two, four, three. So that's that done. So now we can go back to where we were and actually put in the main selector shaft. So here's our main selector shaft here. And then down here, we've got the, the four bearings that go onto these little nubbins on the end. What they're telling us to do is use grease just to put them on. So I'm gonna put some grease, Bob of grease on each one of those, put them on, and then I'll show you me. Um, I'll show you how the shaft goes in. Uh, again, it's going to be upside down because I'll be up. Well, yeah, I'll just shut up. Right, so they're in now with grease. These little bearings are held on the end of there. Now this is going to drop down in there, and this is going to pick up in that square quadrant that I showed you a while ago that we fitted into the bottom of the gearbox. So basically, going to slide that in like so we want it to go in and down which looks like it's a easier said than done because that selector shaft is in the way We can't put it in before the selector shaft because then we can't do the plate. So let me have a think about this and I'll come back. Okay, so I worked it out. Um, I ended up taking this plate out again to see if I could get it in that way, but it's not. I've put the plate back in and I talked with the bolts up. It does go in like this. So plenty of pressure downwards and then you need to turn it clockwise while you're pushing down. And what happens is it slides down and then you can see that pull there goes in through that gap and then it will go into there like so. So now you can see it's gone in. Um, that stops it going down unless you turn it right round and basically you just want to get it so it goes in. So it's sat there now and it's all floppy and floating about but um, basically I think we're in gear. I'm going to get us back into neutral before I carry on with the build. Um, but the next step's going to be now putting this plate in here with the stops and everything. So uh, I'll get the bits together for that and then we'll go move on to that. Okay, so the next step in our brilliant manual is to um, install the locking plate. So we've got some spacers, you can see them there in green. Two spacers, we've got the two bolts, and then we've got the actual plate itself. I'm going to tighten the bolts to 24 newton meters. And here's the plate, here's the bolts. You can see there are Torx T40, and there's the two spacers there, it's great big washers. So um, this plate, looks like it's completely symmetrical but I can see some marks in it there where the bolt heads have been so I'm going to make sure it goes in the right the same way as it came out but it looks like I've measured it up it looks like it's completely symmetrical so it can go in either way so um let's turn the camera around so you can see what we're doing and I've, I've moved the gearbox as well so give you a better view there we go so um basically we've got these two spacers going in here one and two, making sure we don't drop them down inside the gearbox. And then this plate is going on the top. Okay, and that's gonna hook into those little recesses in those selectors. This is basically preventing the selectors from um, engaging more than one gear at a time. So I'm gonna put a drop of thread lock on these. As I said, I'm gonna thread lock everything because the last thing you want in a gearbox is a bolt flying around, especially a, a hardened steel bolt like this one, because it will do all sorts of damage. So we can put that one in there, and then we can put that one in there again, making sure we don't knock anything into the gearbox. Try and get the thread to start. Go. and then 
with our long extension and a T40 bit. That thread's quite tight. It's obviously got some residual thread lock in it, so we we'll just use the ratchet on the torque wrench. Wind that down in. them up to 24 newton meters 18 pounds feet just like so right so next now we've got to go on and, and put these gears back onto that shaft so these three gears here this is second here first and reverse okay so basically these these three gears are going to go onto this shaft and we're going to have a bearing here we're going to have a bearing here we're going to have a um, a pressed on bearing here and then we've got the rear main counter shaft bearing it's in the casing there and then in these spline parts here we've got our um, selector hubs which are mounted on the end of here and we can see there's a spline inside there and these actually come away from the gear and you can see inside there's a spline and my intention here is to heat these up and then slide them on rather than do any pressing and knocking things around and stuff. So it's going to it's going to require a lot of care because um, basically inside here you can see that we've got you've got these bearings, these little um, balls in here in springs. And um, basically they line up into slots and they line up the ball lines up into a groove in the outer part here. Now these square lugs you can see on here. There's one there, one there, one there they must line up with those. If you try and start pressing things together with the misaligned, like that say, then you will actually start breaking stuff. So they have to be aligned. And when it's correctly aligned, it all just drops together like that. Okay. So if you, if you can't turn anything, it's right. If it's like this and it's all floating around like that, then it's wrong. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take this off of here that on the bench. Take this off of here and put that inside there and then take that synchro ring out of there and slide that in. Okay and then that can just sit there. And then we've got another synchro ring here which is going to engage in there. Okay and then that is basically the gear there so nothing's going to fall off of there so we're not going to damage anything. So basically we're going to clean this bearing, give it an oil, slide it onto the shaft. Okay, so we'll drop the bearing on. That's going to go and sit down on the bottom there. Like so. We'll get some oil on there. And then with the gear nice and clean, we can slide the gear over the gear over the bearing. Check that it's all smooth and don't get your fingers stuck between those gears like I almost did because that will ruin your day. And that's all lovely. So there we go, we're in now. Um, now the next thing you've got to do is fit this all this synchro hub off MV on. So as you saw, I took this apart on the bench. Okay, and it was all sat like this. So first things first. That selector ring is going to go, well that synchro ring is going to go in there. Then this one's going to go over the top and those legs are going to engage. Okay, and then we've got this ring here, which is going to go over the top and that's going to engage in there. You can see we've got those slots there that it's engaging in. Now we've got this hub. Now we've got the choice here, we can take it all apart or we can try and heat it up as one assembly. 
Um, I think I'm going to try and do it as one assembly initially. In fact, what I will do is take these rings out of the top. So we've got all these rings in the top. I'll take them out like so and lay them on the bench. Okay, so now I know this goes this way up. And I know that with some heat on there, it will go on because it's starting to go already. So what I'm tempted to do is heat it with it assembled and see if I can drop it on. Now, I don't think I can film this because it's going to involve wearing gloves and everything and we'll see how we go. So um, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, what I've done, I've basically turned this so that I've got this, see this square lump here? Just zoom you in. This square lump here. That's got to engage into that square cutout I showed you in the uh, in the actual synchro hub. So I've got that facing me. So when I put it together, I get it roughly in the right place. But you'll see that when I actually turn this, you can see that the the actual splines turn at a different speed to the gear. So once I get it on there, I can then manipulate it and get it to just drop on. Hopefully, if it won't drop on, I can just misalign it or align it, sorry, and then press it and just tap it on. But we'll uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, I'm not going to lie, that was a complete ass. Um, basically, I got it together um, and it wouldn't go on with just the heat. So I had to get it on the press again and press it on with a load of different pieces of tubing and stuff. So I've managed to get it on um, and basically it fell apart. So I just want to show you really how to do this. These little things here come out. They normally come out. There we go. And... It's really great because normally you get like a big ring and a piece of brass and a ball and a spring. But um, basically, yeah, you've got that little piece there and that's just going to go in. And the way to do those, inside this ring, there are three. In fact, I'll show you now. That's the best way to do it. If you notice as well, I've got a big I've got a t shirt all wrapped around here to stop any of these bits falling in. Inside here, you can see there are three cutouts. And then you come round three cutouts. Okay, 120 degree opposed, and those three cutouts have to line up with the three cutouts in your selector hub. So basically, they're going to go on like that. So you've got your three cutouts lined up. I doubt you can see it. And then, basically, with these, what you do, what I do, is pop them in on an angle, and the ball will fall into one of those cutouts. He says, of course, with the camera on it, won't do it. Okay, and then you can do the same over here. There we go. What we're looking to do, it's very, very difficult to show you this on camera, guys, but if you have a go yourself, you'll see exactly what I'm doing. And then that's going to fall, fall in there. And what you're trying to do is get them to sort of lay back at like a 30 degree angle so that it all goes into those T slots. And then what you can do then is just push this ring down like so. And they will stay there and hold that in its mid position. Okay, so that's what keeps your, your gears from slopping about. That's those balls hold that synchro, that selector ring in place and then it can spring forward and it can spring back okay okay so now we've got a snap ring which is going to go over here if you remember this was a complete ass to get off so it'll probably be an ass to get back on but we'll see so I'm just going to spread it open like this and then push it down in and it looks like it's in but be careful because it's not um, if you look at it closely if you'll be able to see this you can see it's kind of in there, but it's it's getting wider as it goes out. So you really want to go around with like a, a brass drift, brass punch, and just basically tap it down, and it will pop in, just like so. You want to make sure that thing is in there solid. There we go. So now that snap ring is in there and it can't come out. OK, 
okay guys I've had a change of heart I'm gonna end this video very soon and call this gearbox rebuild part one basically because I'm not happy about this snap ring if I zoom you in I'll just show you where I get a pair of tweezers this snap ring was extremely tight to come off and now it's got a lot of float side to side now Really, you should always use new snap rings and stuff, but because this gearbox was so new, I haven't bothered. But I don't really want to have to strip this gearbox again and all the hassle of taking it out and splitting it from the transfer box because that's rattling around in there. What I'm worried about is if that's rattling around in there, um, you know, shards of metal could come up and destroy this bearing. Then if that all comes apart, you know, all sorts could happen. So for the sake of delaying the gearbox build, it's hardly holding the build of Land Rover up. Um, I'm going to stop now, order a new snap ring, I'll order a new snap ring as well for the um, front of the input shaft and then um, and then carry on with the rebuild then in part two. So um, what I'm going to do now is film a bit about the tools you need to get you up to this stage. So um, thanks for watching, um, I hope you've enjoyed this, it's been, a, it's been quite a task, it's not really a beginner's build this one but um, you know, it does go together quite nicely. If you've got a press, you're made up. If you haven't got a press, I think you'll struggle. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all for the next part very soon. Bye for now.